Good afternoon ladies and gents, welcome to another video brought to you by Total Control Traders. Let's get right into it. Let's try to make a short video today, not a whole lot of updates in the market right now. We are still in that descending wedge and today was a very decent bounce. Not a, not a whole lot of bull volume, not a whole lot of craziness. Uh, depending on what ticker you're looking at, you know, let's, uh, let's just cover some ETFs for example. So I'm looking at Ying, which is uh, China ETFs, just pull it up as we talk about it so that you guys can refer to it. Ying oversold, slight bounce, look at this, this is this potential volume climax on this follow through to the downside as we get extended on the daily to the downside, okay, Pre fairly extended on the daily. What about the weekly? Weekly is pretty darn extended on the on the weekly as well. Volume climax, volume climax potential on the weekly as well. Monthly. Yeah, monthly is pretty extended. So there is a fairly decent potential play for China names as of right now. Um, I mean, there's a lot of news coming out. There's a lot of delisting potentials. People are talking about it. Hey, you know, fear is for buying, right? Even if it's just for a short-term bounce, I can see this This is, uh, let's see, RSI is at 16 on the daily. Weekly RSI is at 26. It's okay. It is pretty extended on the weekly though. Monthly is pretty darn extended as well. Monthly RSI is at 29. So I can't see this having a bounce, but today it does not show that there is, uh, this is gonna be a definite bounce. We're gonna need to see that reversal candle. Even though the volume is very, very nice, we could see another two or three more days of continued increasing volume before an actual climax. So today, because there's no reversal candle on it, I don't really like it. Anyways, the other one is the SOXX is fairly decent strength today as we saw a what this now looks like is also a descending wedge, of course, based on the market as well. So looking at this, this is a descending wedge. Um, the lower trend line, we slightly lost it yesterday and today was a gap and run. Okay, a gap up and run. What is this called? Piercing, no, it's not piercing candle. I can't remember the exact candle of this, but this is a very, one hell of a, one hell of a bullish candle. We did see a stall at the day eight, so there is no confirmation of a break yet. Not at least, at least not until this upper trend line breaks. Okay, I have the alert marked on this upper trend line and that's exactly why. This is the key trend line to watch. Next one is uh, FNGU, same idea. So we're covering some of the triple leverage ETFs, some of the uh, underlying assets. So for example, SOXX is for SOXL play. Uh, FNGU, same idea. So we are, let's see if I'm seeing a lower trend line here. Let's see how that works. Wow, would you look at that? Almost to the, to the, to the Depending on how you drive, because this is a gap down immediate buy up, you can probably call this a lower trend line. So ultimately, right now is in the descending wedge as well, upper trend line, increasing momentum to the downside, looking like it's potentially losing momentum. RSI is not really slowing down yet. So let's get get to the market then. So market, same idea, descending wedge. This is the zones I'm looking at. It does not look as nice as Nasdaq. To be honest, I don't really like this uh, lower trend zone portion. Because when we look at this, you know, I, I drew it multiple times, multiple different ways. I could not find the exact right drawing. There is no lower part of the trend line. Um, when you draw this, if you're using a zone, because upper part, you can see bounce, bounce, wick again, and then wick again yesterday, today. But the problem I have with it is this low, lower wick that's slightly lost below that lower trend line. So the below that lower trend zone. So the thing, the, th the part of the reason why I'm saying that you know Nasdaq is one of the top watches. I would rather watch Nasdaq as the way it stands right now versus SPX is because Nas, as I mentioned, if Nas runs, market's gonna run. If if Nas dies. Excuse me. Uh, if Nas dies, market's gonna die. So when we look at Nasdaq, this tr trend zone works out a lot better, and you can probably draw it a little bit lower now, actually. But I do like how I do want to see how it works on this wick. Maybe it doesn't work that well. Hold on. Give me one sec. Let me redraw this. Uh, that works a little bit better, eh? A little bit better based on the real bodies, but not a whole lot better. So we'll keep it at this. We'll keep it at the wick for now. So this is the lower trend zone. The reason why I like it a lot more is when you look at this uh, lower part, it when you draw from this point to this point, it lines up exactly the same same kind of line. 
anyways, so this is the same descending wedge you're looking at for NASDAQ. All eyes on NASDAQ. We are still rejecting potentially rejecting from that 88 still seeing a little bit of trouble today with that 88 so with that being mentioned you know fngu is relative weak because it hasn't even touched that 88 yet and it's partially because of the china weakness as well china is far from the 88 right so with that being said let's cover the uh i'm actually kind of interested in taking a look at te tesla here hey, what would you look at tesla that key zone bounce again today hey so that key zone where we previously seen, previously seeing a support, so a straight break, back test that key zone, another couple of supports before breaking down, and then back test from the downside a rejection, and another rejection over here, another rejection over here before an actual breakout, and boom, that was in run. That was a huge run, and now we're seeing very strong support here. That that one bounce, and then gap down straight up, straight buy up. Second bounce on the lower part of the key zone. And then now another two two days of lower wicks from that lower part of the key zone. So Tesla is very interesting. Now we are still in that descending channel for Tesla. You can maybe call this a descending wedge, depending on how you want to draw the upper trend line. I don't really like it as a descending wedge just because of how when we zoom into the four hours. Whoa, why is there so many trend lines? Give me one sec here. Clean the chart up here. Delete that one. Nope. Yeah, okay, delete that one. Uh, delete this one. Uh, delete this one. And then change this one to a white one. Yeah, you can maybe call this in that trend line, but I don't really like it because of that wick over it. So regardless, this is gonna be the key trend line that I'm looking at for this bowl to break. When we look at the volume on today's move, there's nothing too, too significant, right? So yesterday, actually, since we're looking at NAS, the last two days sell-off on NAS was very insignificant. The bear volume today, the balance, people are getting excited about it, but the volume's not there. So tomorrow, we're going to need to see that follow-through with bull volume coming in at least, at the very least, an increasing bull volume. And if we were to reject from here, that's okay. Make a higher low, four-hour higher low before an actual bull break. So this is what I'm looking at here. Potential-wise for bull the thesis, you know, uh, reject tomorrow, higher four-hour higher low before an actual bull break, or we can just see a straight bull break, but we're going to need to see that bull volume. So that's bull, bull thesis. Bull thesis. The bear thesis is same idea as before. What we have always talked about that SPX 4K. SPX 4K is going to bring Nasdaq down to around this extension targets so around 12, 12 238, 12 138, around that area, bottom of the key zone, before a bounce. Okay. So that's the market. Let's get into the requested tickers. There's only a couple today, so we'll take a look at. Hey, been a long time since we took a look at. Uh, Lucid. Hey, look at where it's at today. Money line. Okay. Before, so this, I think this is IPO. Probably IPO. And then, boom. Bounce. Huge bounce. All the way from $16 all the way to $57. Of course, nothing comparing to the IPO run. This is a 258% return. Meaning 258% in your pocket, not 250% of your pocket original investment versus 550, 545% on that first IPO run. Now we're back at that money line. We are back at that money line. We are seeing a very nice potential reversal candle here from Lucid. I kind of forgot about it, actually. Uh, I was looking to play it. Mm, what happened to it? Oh, that's what happened. I forgot to set an alert on this. Oh, my God. Should I set an alert on the uh, money line here? Um, you know, small risk. Nice bottom fish area, increased momentum to the downside. You're gonna need to see that follow through. As long as, the, as, long as the market presents follow through tomorrow, this is gonna see a nice bull break on this increased momentum downwards upper trend line. Okay, once we see that bull break, we should see at least a pop to let's measure this. I want to say the, t the upper part of the key zone. Let's see if that's realistic. So we draw a fib from the top. To the, to the low, considering today, if today is a low. 0.382 would mark as the resistance. So that's a bit too high. 
for like you can see that as a long term. So if if this is to bounce, GP actually makes sense. You now short term wise, the GP makes sense. GP is going to be around twenty six. $26 and considering how we're trading just under 22 that's an already a 20% run from here as long as we see that follow tomorrow okay lucid is going to be a top watch tomorrow and the next day next uh, other ticker that we're looking at is M -L M -U -L -N. whoa what's with this ticker you're buying uh okay maybe not I was going to say you're buying a falling knife, but it looks like the daily trend has actually trend changed. Uh, volume is coming in. This is a very interesting chart because there's huge volume lately, whereas before it just continued no, no volume, zero volume. $1.60. Market cap is $55 million. Um, Looking at this chart, there is a daily trend change. Okay, daily lower high, higher low, higher high, but the higher high is getting shut down. So there's a little bit of a red flag. Looking at the bear volume here, there's a little bit of a red flag. Today is just an inside bar. Tomorrow should show direction. What we're gonna need to see that follow through tomorrow, or is there a gap? 150, 154, 157. So there is a slight gap, four cent gap in between 150 and 154. Tomorrow we might see a uh, slight sell off to fill the gap before an actual run. That would be the most ideal bull thesis. But looking at this last two days bear volume, it's a little bit concerning to me, especially how this uh, new high no follow through. I would consider, you know, maybe the selling is not done yet. Uh, when we look at, is there an upper trend line? I think the upper trend line already broke bull. Just by a quick look at, look of this. Uh, let's see if we draw it. Yeah, so that's the upper trend line. So upper trend line. The reason, why, okay. So for those of you that are newer to the channel, the reason why we didn't use this high, we normally use the high, which would first one be over here. But for, from a quick eyeball, you can already tell that this is way broken already, right? And the the other thing is sometimes we don't use the wick. We use real bodies instead, especially when there's like a huge upper wick sell off. Same with this huge upper wick, then maybe consider using the real body as uh, as a initial point. So with that, you know, this is the upper trend line. We're seeing one, two, three rejections before it, a bull break, straight back down, more guiding of that uh, of that uh, that upper trend line, bull bull volume pop, bull break, continuation on decreasing volume, low bear volume. Nice bull volume pop, and then gap and red flag. Gap and red flag. You needed to see that continuation this day, which is uh, yesterday, Monday. And then today we see a little bit more selling coming in. That's a concern. Now, we could be seeing decreased momentum selling downwards, but this is now the upper trend line to watch. There's been two rejections, actually three rejections on it now already. One, two, three rejections. Today didn't even touch it. So M U L N. Now it could be a very, it could very well be a breakout fake out. Breakout fake out. If you're in from the fifty cents, there's nothing wrong with bulls right now. Use that daily eight as your guide. Uh, tomorrow, if the, if the bear breaks, watch the reaction at the daily eight. You don't. You do not want to see a close under the daily eight, especially after this daily eight bounce. You know, daily eight. You're gonna need to see that support. All right. So that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoy the content. If you if you know anyone that may benefit from the videos we share, please consider sharing our channel with them. Very much appreciated. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment down below. Love to see you guys in the next video. Take care.